In these two screencasts, we're going to discuss some of the properties that fluids have. So in part one, what we're going to look at are density and what's known as the bulk modulus. So let's start with density. So we have density and we write this as rho and it has units of kilograms per meter cubed and therefore its definition is mass per unit volume. We can also describe it in English units. We can have the units of slugs per feet cubed, even though that's not used as often as the SI units. So density is a strong function of temperature in gases, think the ideal gas law, but not as much for liquids. So why is this a function of position? Well, as heat is added to the gas, the density decreases. The more heat, the less dense. So as the gas goes down the tube, more heat is added, the density decreases, therefore that density is going to be a function of position. So often the value of the density is not given but can be calculated for, from other values. So for example, you can use the ideal gas law such that density is equal to the pressure times the molar mass or molecular weight of the fluid divided by R, which is the universal gas constant, times T. You can also sometimes see what's known as the specific volume, which is just one over rho, and so you can see that its units are meters cubed per kilogram. And we don't really use that very much in fluids, but you will see it in thermodynamics. We also have what's known as the specific weight of a fluid, and that uses the Greek letter gamma. And it is similar to density except that it is the weight per unit volume. And the way we find our specific weight, that it is equal to the density of the fluid times gravity. And its units are going to be in newtons per meter cubed. Probably the most common value given in the tables is what's known as the specific gravity. And that's the density of your fluid divided by the reference density. And the reference density for liquids and solids is water at 4 degrees C. So in SI units, the reference density is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. So in order to get the fluid density that you're interested in, you take the specific gravity, which is unitless, that you find from a table and multiply it by 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. So usually in a basic fluids course, we assume incompressible fluids, which we define as a fluid with no change in density. However, many important systems use compressible fluids. So we need a way to determine how compressible a fluid is. And what we use is E sub V, which is known as the bulk modulus of a fluid. And so this bulk modulus is equal to minus dp divided by dv over v. And what that means is our dp is this differential change in pressure 
and the bulk modulus, therefore, is this differential change in pressure that's needed to create a differential change in volume. Note that this expression is negative. Why? Because an increase in pressure will cause a decrease in volume and vice versa. We can also write this in terms of density. So here's this differential pressure, change in pressure that's needed to cause a differential change in density. So here the value is positive, since if you take a mass, which is defined as the density times the volume, if the volume decreases, the density must increase, the conservation of mass, and therefore this is going to be positive. So again, the bulk modulus is defined as the differential change in pressure needed to create a differential change in density. Since liquids are considerably more dense than gases, that number is going to have to be higher for liquids. In fact, it's in the range of about 10 to the 9 pascals compared to around 10 to the 5th for gases. So in our next screencast, we're going to talk about two other properties. One of them is vapor pressure and the other is surface tension.